Welcome to Conversations on Discipleship. I'm your host, Father Adam Streitenberger. With me today is Jerry Freewalt. Welcome again, Jerry. Thank you for having me on the show. Yeah, great to have you. Let's start with a prayer in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you are the source of all wisdom and all goodness. Enlighten our hearts and minds that we might be formed by your truth and that we might manifest to all the world um, your love and your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So um, our listeners should uh, remember you, as you know, we've done several um, bits together before, um, and you used to work here in the diocese in the Social Concerns Office. For over 25 years. Over 25 years, but you have recently taken a new position. And what is, what is this new role? I did. Uh, my new role is Executive Director of the Catholic Conference of Ohio. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Jerry has moved up in the world, you know. He's... <laughs> I'm still a servant. <clears throat> yes, I am a servant. That's beautiful. Yeah, we want to we always want to stay humble and small no matter what happens. So Jerry, um, a lot of people may not know what the Ohio Catholic Conference is. And in fact, it you know, it is kind of a quite it, there's not a whole lot of attention at least that I noticed, given to it. But what is the Ohio Catholic Conference? Well, the conference started in 1945 as the Ohio Catholic Welfare Conference, which means for the good of the church and the common good. And really, the conference is a convening of the board of directors who are the bishops of Ohio. So in Ohio, we have the six uh, Roman uh, Latin Rite bishops, but we also have three Eastern Rite bishops who also serve on the board of directors. And really what the conference does is that we're the voice um, on public matters um, for the Catholic Church, uh, on church matters and for the common good. So in a sense, we are advocates. We advocate um, to the General Assembly, to state agencies of government, and we try to build and bring our witness to bear for important issues of the day. So is it comparable to the United States Bishops Conference, the USCCB? Yeah, it's state level. It's for the state of Ohio. So again, it's like the bishops are coming together and conferring uh, with one another on important issues. And there are a lot of different committees as well. So you are the, you're not the chair of the board. It's probably no, the, the Archbishop, Archbishop of Cincinnati is, yeah. is the chair of the board. But you run the office that's surrounded by, by the conference. Correct. My job is to uh, run the conference in terms of the operations of the conference, uh, to manage staff, and oversee the advocacy uh, realm of the conference. And there's a lot of different other programs of the conference, and my job is also to facilitate uh, interdiocesan programs and activities um, that happen periodically around the state. What size staff does do you have? Uh, not big. It's uh, right now we have. Um, I'm counting. I only started a month ago, <laughs> so we have about five other people on staff. When it's the full complement, uh, we have um, a director of or associate director of social concerns, and they uh, convene Catholic charity directors, social service. Uh, directors. Um, they convene the um, social action directors, pro-life directors around the state of Ohio. Um, there's a lot of different duties and assignments for the associate director of uh, social concerns. We have an associate director of education. So the education department, we convene the superintendents of Catholic schools around the diocese. We convene government program staff. Uh, all those issues that we have regarding um, Catholic schools, charter non-public Catholic schools. We also have an accreditation staff person, and this person really um, makes sure that our Catholic schools are compliant with rules and regulations for the state of Ohio, um, and makes sure that our schools um, are adhering to Catholic identity, um, so promoting um, the mission of the church um, in terms of our, our faith. Um, and we have an administrative assistant as well. Um, that's in, that's interesting. So the accreditation of our Catholic schools, it it's sort of overseen by this by the conference rather than say like the state board of education. Correct. It used to be by the state board of education uh, years ago. However, we have made arrangements several years ago to uh, comply with rules and regulations, but also and to ensure 
our Catholicity in the Catholic school. So instead of having a form from multiple places, it comes from one place. And uh, we, we are very strict in adherence to the state regulations and to our Catholic faith. I remember when I taught at Newark Catholic, I had to get a certification, you know? Yes. So I had a master's degree, and so they... And it came from the conference, basically. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and, and the accreditation, I'm learning more about that because my background was in social concerns. Mm -hmm. And so I'm learning a lot about it. It's a very detailed job. Um, There's a lot of um, boxes to check to make sure that you are in compliance. And they're looking at everything from uh, fire fire drills, uh, fire codes, um, curriculum, um, all the way to how are we implementing Catholic social teaching? So there's a lot of things that they have to do. Now, you mentioned statewide initiatives mm-hmm. that are that kind of all of the dioceses are working on. What kind of initiatives would that be? Well, in terms of um, convenings, you know, for example, we were working on an interdiocesan uh, convening of Catholic school um, diocesan staff, and we would bring speakers together to work on issues, uh, to talk about issues of, of the day, whether it's in mental health, that's whether curriculum, um, best practices, we would convene people together. We would have, um, at times, advocacy days um, where we'd have people from all over the state come together, talk to their legislators uh, about the issues that we care about, life issues, uh, poverty, education, things like that. The, um, I, I, re- I recall many, many years ago, there was an initiative of all the bishops in Ohio mm-hmm. for, to, to bring everyone, all the priests together mm-hmm. for marriage, um, it was marriage preparation and kind mm-hmm. of the best practices in marriage preparation. I'd imagine you guys probably were Yes, I did things. hear about that. That, w- that happened several years ago, I believe. But the Catholic Conference of Ohio was um, in charge of that program, the bishops um, um, asked the, the, the staff to convene that group. If you're tuning in, this is Conversations on Discipleship, and I'm your host, Father Adam Streitenberger. With me today is Jerry Freewalt, who is the CEO, is that? Uh, no, I'm the executive director. The yes. executive <laughs> director of the Ohio Catholic Conference. Um, I was wondering, so another kind of, at least in my mind, the Ohio mm-hmm. Catholic Conference is associated with the word lobbying, mm-hmm. um, and that it is kind of the instrument by which the bishops and, and really the Catholic Church mm-hmm. in Ohio are able to advocate, as you, as you used earlier, um, for issues at our heart. So, um, you know, this is a, sort of an interesting, do you have lobbyists on staff that are kind of working with state legislators? You know, we do. Um, I've been an advocate pretty much all my adult life. Um, I've advocated and um, talked to legislators um, at the federal level, state level, and uh, local level here at the diocese. And I, I was an advocate. Mm-hmm. Um, I am now a registered lobbyist, and hopefully that's not a bad word. I mean, again, the word lobbyist comes from, you know, people who are really delivering important information and trying to persuade and trying to really work with legislators and, and, and try to achieve a, a legislative goal. And so um, a lobbyist is a person who has to be registered with the state of Ohio and consider a lot of their time interacting with public officials. Um, And so we have lobbyists. We have three lobbyists on staff uh, at the conference. I am a registered lobbyist. And then the associate director of education and the associate director of social concerns are are also lobbyists who are registered. Mm -hmm. And um, what, I mean, what does this work of lobbying look like? Well, I mean, it's not yeah. like big steak dinners in a smoke no, room you know, or the, something. We're like the that. Catholic Church, so there's no <laughs> there's no smoke filled rooms and uh, steak dinners, as you said. Uh, we we try not to spend <laughs> money with lo- you know some some you know some lobbying firms get a bad rap, right? Because they pile a lot of money into campaigns uh, to legislate. We do not give legislators any money for campaigns. We're we're a nonprofit organization. Um, And so what we do, again, our lobbying is picking up the phone, talking to legislators, having meetings with legislators, um, talking with uh, administrative staff um, of different state agencies, and having conversations with them, and providing them with information that may be relevant to them to either uh, improve a bill, to maybe stop a bill, um, to whatever the case may be that we are trying to 
influence a decision um, at the state house that is in care and concern for the church and the common good. And you know, I think um, not uh, obviously not to get too partisan, mm-hmm. but some people might try to associate the church with one political party or the other. But in your role, it seems like you're working across aisles. I am working across the aisles. Look, we have to work for the common good, and that means everybody in common needs to be part of it. And so the church does not pick sides in a partisan way. We are to be nonpartisan. And in fact, when you uh, read uh, Pope Francis's uh, Fratelli Tutti, his, uh, his latest encyclical letter, you know, he talks about we're all in the same boat. And so as church, we have to be all in the same boat and try to work together. Now, there might be times when um, a Democrat might be for us or against us, the party, and there are times when the Republicans are for and against us um, on a particular issue. Um, we're, we, we try not to burn any bridges, and we try to um, build relationships no matter who they are to achieve uh, our goal. Um, one of the things I want to kind of hit upon, and we maybe – here, but then we can go to our next section, mm-hmm. is, um, and we'll t- we can talk a little bit more about maybe issues that need advocacy mm-hmm. and everything like that, but there is a sense where perhaps in your role as a, you know, as a lobbyist mm-hmm. and the conference's role is a witness to the church as sort of this um, place of peace and meeting mm-hmm. within society. Yeah. You know, this is, this is an interesting, unique role because we're called to be missionary disciples. I mean, it's the program, right? And so we are, in a sense, missionaries of the church going to public officials. And whether we're talking to the governor or we're talking to uh, a state uh, senator, you know, or a legislative assistant, you know, we're bringing the face of Christ and the concerns of the church to them. And hopefully by our witness and what we are saying, we're shedding the light of Christ on them um, in terms of expressing our care and concern. Uh, so in a way, it is um, a missionary discipleship role that I see. And I know in the past when I've engaged in some advocacy efforts, we had some chances to talk about our faith and, and some of the issues and struggles that we have. Excellent. You've been listening to Conversations on Discipleship. I'm your host, Father Adam Streitenberger. With me today has been Jerry Freewalt. And until next time, peace and all good. Boom.